Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Today, in the Honeybee neighborhood, we'll need to put our detective hats on. Mr. Honeybee is acting strange, and he won't admit why. I'm not acting strange. I'm just, um, busy, working on stuff and things. You know, stuff and things. What things? The thingy kind of stuff and the stuffy kind of things. Okay, Mr. Honeybee. You're not up to something. Exactly. Sarcasm detected. Sarcasm detected. Wait, who was that? All you have to do is close your eyes. Get cozy and listen to the sound of my voice. Mrs. Honeybee will be your guide. Let's begin. You are here, walking up the driveway toward our open garage. Mr. Honeybee doesn't hear your footsteps as you peek in, so you knock your knuckles softly on the garage door. When that doesn't get his attention, convinced that you have no other option but to scare him when you announce yourself, you walk loud, heavy footsteps up to his workbench. With your hands laid gently on the black top of Mr. Honeybee's workbench, you are shocked. He still doesn't see, hear, or sense you beside him. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose and sink into this moment of golden opportunity to give Mr. Honeybee a fun little scare. Then slowly breathe a faint hello all the way out through your mouth and stand back for Mr. Honeybee's inevitable reaction. Ah. <laughs> Oh, hello. Phew. Hello, my little honeybee. Phew. You really got me with that one. (laughs) I didn't hear you at all. Mr. Honeybee turns around with his back to his workbench and asks how your day is going, like he usually does. As you reply, you notice something rather unusual behind his back. His hands seem to still be tinkering, moving about in contrast to his ears and eyes being fixed attentively on you. Before you can ask what he's working on with such busy hands today, he has already bundled up a pile of metallic gadgets and gizmos and stowed them away in a tiny cubby that you've never noticed before in the corner of the garage. Let me just put this stuff away. Oh, it's nothing really. Just some trinkets and stuff. It's nothing. He slides a small door shut before you can get a good look at what exactly he's stuffing in there. When you look at the corner of the garage again, you realize that you can't even see the cubby hole when it's closed. Has that been there the whole time? You pause, thinking this to yourself, then turn to see that Harold has woken up from his nap. He and Melody B rush out into the garage to greet you with big hugs. Little honeybee, it's so nice to see you. What are you looking at over there in the corner? Oh, nothing. It's nothing. Let's head out into the garden. We were just on our way out there. Come on. Hello there, my little honeybee. What are you heading out to the garden for? We weren't. Really? I could have sworn we were heading out to the garden. I pinky promise we had no plans to be in the garden. Really? 
Hmm. Well, let's get out of the garage and get some sunshine. You know, the human body cannot produce vitamin D on its own. It's metabolized by our skin cells. Cholesterol, actually. And... Melody Bee's eyes narrow, listening to Mr. Honeybee's impromptu explanation of vitamin D. It's well known by now that when people get nervous, they over-explain things. She looks at you, then at me, and we all look back at Mr. Honeybee thinking the same thing. Mr. Honeybee, are you hiding something? What? No. Of course not. <laughs> um, what would I... Why would... <laughs> uh, no way. Hmm. What's that on your workbench, my dear? A new gadget? <laughs> Mr. Honeybee looks back to see that three yellow domes are still laying out on his workbench. One of the domes has an antenna on it, which makes it look important. Oh, <laughs> uh, these are nothing. He rushes over to scoop them up, still dazzling us with information about vitamin D, and pushes them into the invisible cubby in the corner of the garage. They don't look like nothing. They look interesting. Wait. What is that hidden compartment? Are you hiding something? All of this is nothing, my dear. Come on, I want to show you something that's actually something out in the backyard. Mr. Honeybee all but corrals us through the door, into the house, and out into the backyard where he's visibly relieved. So... What did you want to show us, Mr. Honeybee? Oh, um, I wanted to show you this flower. What is this flower? I saw it this morning and was just struck by its beauty. Um... My dear, that's a sunflower. The sunflowers have been here for months. Wow, sunflowers are so nice. You sure are acting strange today, Mr. Honeybee. Really? Maybe I should go lie down. I do feel kind of woozy. Yes, maybe that's a good idea. Phew, a midday nap never hurt anyone. You go do that, my dear. I'm going to head upstairs with our little honeybee to write for a bit. Melody B. Are you going to be out in the garden for a while? No, I was gonna... I thought you were going to repot all those flowers over there. Oh, <clears throat> yes. I was going to repot all of those flowers. The ones over there. Thank you for reminding me, Mrs. Honeybee. Okay. Um... I'll be in my recliner if anyone needs me. He never takes naps. He sure doesn't. We need to let him think we're otherwise occupied. But we need to get to the bottom of this. Melody B, meet us at the windowsill in a couple minutes. We're going to walk by Mr. Honeybee so he thinks we're upstairs in my office writing. But I have a plan. Got it. We quietly and nonchalantly walk back through the house, past Mr. Honeybee reclined in his favorite chair, pretending to sleep, and up the stairs to my office, where a wooden desk sits by a window that overlooks the garden. This is where I first met Melody B. long, long ago. We spend a lot of time here devising stories, but today we'll instead devise a plan. After a short while, 
Melody B buzzes up to the window to rest on the windowsill. When she arrives, she has regretful news. I think I know what's going on, Mrs. Honeybee. What is it? It's obvious that Mr. Honeybee is a spy. I don't know how we didn't see it before. Mr. Honeybee is not a spy, Melody Bee. <laughs> He's up to something, though. I know him too well to not know what it is. I'll need your help, both of you. Of course. Now I'm a spy. As a newly minted spy, Melody B will do a flutterby mission and gather as much intel as she can. She starts immediately, fluttering into the house, passing by Mr. Honeybee, who is pretending to be asleep more dramatically this time. When she approaches the door to go out to the garage, Mr. Honeybee bolts up from his recliner and stops her in her tracks. Oh, hey, are you going out to the garage? I thought you were going to be in the garden all afternoon. Oh yeah, I need some more twine to help the flowers stay up. They're getting so big that they're just kind of slumping down. Just getting twine. There's some in your tool chest, that middle drawer. Remember? Is that okay, Mr. Honeybee? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, of course. Sorry for waking you up, Mr. Honeybee. You seem to be sound asleep over there. Oh, it's no worry, Melody Bee. I'm a light sleeper. Knowing full well that Mr. Honeybee is anything but a light sleeper, Melody Bee makes her way out to the garage and rummages through as many drawers as she can to make enough noise to get a good look in the cubby. She can't quite get it open, but she hears something on the other side. It sounds like a voice. Nervousness slows her down and she hesitates to slide the cubby door open a moment too long. Mr. Honeybee returns, curious as to what's taking so long. Melody Bee, is everything okay out here? Uh-huh. Just grabbing an extra pair of pruners. You know that pruning plants is a way to make them grow more? So funny, huh? Who would have guessed? It's just like hair. If you want your hair to grow long, you need to cut it. So weird, right? As Melody B desperately flutters out of the garage to catch a relieving breath, Mr. Honeybee remembers that when someone gets nervous, they tend to over-explain things. He wonders if we are up to something, but dismisses the thought when he hears Melody B return to the garden. Little does he know, she's fluttered back up to the windowsill to report her flutterby findings. Mr. Honeybee is most certainly a spy. We'll need to devise a more sneaky plan, Mrs. Honeybee. And I hate to say it, but I think we'll need to go incognito. Do you really think such drastic measures are needed? I would never suggest this if it were not absolutely necessary. Okay, if you say so. It's my professional and humble opinion, Mrs. Honeybee. This is how we get to the bottom of the mystery we've stumbled upon. As always, little honeybee, I'll need your help. And you'll need to shrink. As Melody B explains the help she needs, she blows a cloud of transformation pollen through the window screen. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. Feel your chest expand 
getting bigger and bigger. Then slowly breathe all the way out through your mouth as you shrink smaller and smaller until you are the teeniest, tiniest little bee. You buzz out of my office and down the stairs, once again passing by Mr. Honeybee, who has actually fallen asleep this time. Melody Bee buzzes around the side of the house to meet you on the other side of the screen door that leads to the garage. There, on either side of the screen, you two realize you are now too small to easily open the door as quietly as you need to. Mr. Honeybee shifts in his recliner and you buzz over there to make sure he's really asleep. Harold is curled up right by him, and both are soundly sleeping. Using your new-to-you stinger, you poke a little hole in the screen and make your way out into the garage with Melody B, who is waiting with the next part of the plan. She leads you to the invisible cubby in the corner, and together, you once again Listen for the voice she described. The slightest whistle entertains itself on the other side, so softly that it seems to be in your ears only. Whatever or whoever Mr. Honeybee is hiding is most certainly in there. Here, help me open this cubby. Combining your microscopic strength, you and Melody Bee use your little honeybee arms to pull, yank, and pound at the cubby door until it finally gives in to your pressures. You both buzz inside the cubby, but it's so dark that you cannot see anything. It's much bigger than you expect though. You bump and buzz into the walls to get a sense of how big the space is. As a little honeybee, it seems massive. Melody Bee can hardly see you, so she whispers to your shadow as best she can. Do you see who could have been whistling, little honeybee? I can't see anything. Melody Bee thinks you're right beside her, but you're actually across the cubby from her. You keep bumping into something big and mechanical, something that doesn't seem to move and looks to be a bright shade of blue. With your ultraviolet honeybee eyes, the mysterious blue is vivid and alluring. You buzz along its outline and see that it also has a single wheel that seems to be supporting it. You and Melody B are too small to drag whatever's in the cubby out and it's too dark to see once you're inside the secret cubby. Melody B finally finds you and leads you back out to Mr. Honeybee's tool chest. This is where the last step in the plan waits. Harold's favorite treat is in here. We save it for only the most special occasions. And in order to do that, we have to keep it hidden behind a lock and key in Mr. Honeybee's tool chest. Cold hard steel is the only thing that could possibly keep Harold from this treat. You and Melody B pile a tantalizing amount of Harold's favorite treats in the cubby and leave the door to the cubby just the slightest bit ajar. The aroma will waft directly to his nose. All that's left to do is make the hole in the screen door that you wiggled through big enough 
so Harold can scratch his way through. You and Melody B use your stingers like buzz saws to poke enough holes in the screen door that it doesn't stand a chance against Harold's groping paws. He somehow gets even stronger when he's on the search for a treat. Once the plan has been put in place, you two buzz back up to me inside at my writing desk. I have been waiting and wondering what Mr. Honeybee could possibly be hiding. When I hear you two come back, I am so relieved. Melody Bee transforms you back into a human now that your incognito mission is complete. How did it go? What did you see? The treats are in place. Now all we have to do is wake Harold up. Perfect. That should give us enough time in Mr. Honeybee's garage to get whatever's hiding inside that dark, hidden cubby out into the daylight. We walk down the stairs as loudly as we can, trying to stir Harold awake. He is still snuggled up beside Mr. Honeybee, who is also still sound asleep. Our loud footsteps do nothing to wake either of them. We get all the way downstairs, and each of us cough loudly. When that doesn't work, I have no choice but to, not so accidentally, drop my heaviest cast iron skillet. Mr. Honeybee and Harold bolt up from their afternoon nap and look to us in the kitchen to make sure everything is okay. <clears throat> Mrs. Honeybee, is everything okay? What was that? So sorry, my dear. I suddenly had a craving for homemade pizza. When I grabbed the skillet, it must have slipped. Oh good. I'm glad everyone is okay. And it's always nice to wake up to a homemade pizza. The house is about to smell delicious, Harold. Much to Mr. Honeybee's surprise, Harold holds snout up sniffing the air as if it already smells delicious. We smile to ourselves, knowing that our plan is working. The delicious, tantalizing smell of not one, but a pile of Harold's most favorite treats pulls him up from the recliner. Slowly at first, but then with furious speed that comes from knowing you're this close to what you always want more of. Hypnotized, Harold runs to the garage screen door, which becomes an obstacle to overcome. He scratches and paws and whimpers at the door, just like we thought he would. In the blink of an eye, before Mr. Honeybee can get there, Harold rips through the screen and into the garage. Harold, no, stop. How did he get through the screen door? We follow Harold out to the garage and while Mr. Honeybee inspects the screen door, we watch as Harold wedges his snout and front paws into the door of the cubby that's open just enough. When Mr. Honeybee realizes that Harold is getting in, it's too late. The powerful trance of Harold's favorite treats has opened the cubby door. With all three of us standing before the cubby and Harold fully inside the hidden compartment, Mr. Honeybee is not able to talk us back out to the garden. We look through the door to the pitch black compartment and watch 
as Harold licks his snout, getting every last morsel of the pile he scarfed down. Harold trots out slowly, and behind him, someone else follows. A blue steel robot with a single wheel for feet, big curious eyes, and a yellow half sphere with an antenna on the top of his head rolls out. He stretches his arms big and wide as if he too just woke up from a nap. We are all stunned to see someone looking back at us. That someone blinks a few times, adjusts his antenna, and rolls further out into the garage. Hi, I'm Roger Robot. Hi, Roger Robot. I'm Mrs. Honeybee. And that's Melody Bee and Harold. I'm sure you already know Mr. Honeybee, doesn't he, my dear? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> And this is our little honeybee. Mr. Honeybee, you are keeping a whole entire new friend from us? Why? I wasn't keeping him from you all. I just wanted him to be perfect before you met him. He is perfect. He looks like the most perfect Roger robot I've ever seen. You should have told us, my dear. I know. I don't know why I didn't. I get so caught up in making everything just right. What could possibly be made better about him? A new friend is always perfect as is. Hi again, Roger Robot. It's so nice to meet you officially. How are you? Hi, I'm Roger Robot. I... I know. <laughs> Hi, Roger Robot. I'm Melody B. How are you? Hi, I'm Roger Robot. Oh, wait one second. I need to adjust a couple things. Roger Robot, did that help? Hi, I'm Roger Robot. Oh, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Whew, thank you for fixing my vocal settings, Mr. Honeybee. I thought I was going to have to start blinking in Morse code to communicate. You know Morse code? You don't? No, Roger. We don't have IntelliChips like you do. We just have brains. Oh, wow. Can't you just do a software update on them? <laughs> no. Our hardware and software is much more fixed than yours. <laughs> it seems like we have a lot to talk about to get to know you. Don't we, Roger? Roger that, Mrs. Honeybee. Do you want me to start at my first memory and list them in chronological order or in order of significance? Oh, I meant... Wait, Mr. Honeybee, do you have my memories? I can't find them. Oh, and where are my ears? Oh, yes, yes, here. I forgot I took out your memory drive. You needed more space in there to store all the memories you'll make. And here are your ears. Mr. Honeybee reaches into the cubby and pulls out the little yellow spheres we saw him toss in there before. Ah, that's better. Now I have all my memories which combine to make up my personality. Where do you want me to start, Mrs. Honeybee? At the beginning, please. So, once upon a time, about 15 minutes ago, I was fully programmed. While I was powered down and charging in my cubby, two very quiet bees came to visit. I couldn't say hi to them, but it seemed like they wanted me to. About eight minutes ago, I rolled out of my cubby for the first time. About one minute ago, I met a whole bunch of new friends with brains. That's it so far. <laughs> he's my newest prototype, but he's still kind of new. Well. It's wonderful to meet you, Roger Robot. I'm sure your memory's hard drive will be filled up in no time. We spend the rest of the afternoon 
getting to know Roger Robot, a new friend that Mr. Honeybee built. It was a labor of love that he understandably wanted to keep secret until it was ready. Luckily, with your help, we got to the bottom of this mystery. And even more lucky, Mr. Honeybee isn't a spy. <laughs> or at least I don't think he is. Always remember, Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again. <laughs>